That's a heck of a game uh, for the three of us. Our first time being part of the semifinals Friday night, Madison Square Garden, Big East Tournament, playing UConn. Doesn't get much better than that, I guess, unless you get to Saturday. Um, you know, we, we really tried to emphasize to our guys that we had to win on the defensive end. Uh, you know, UConn's a terrific team on both ends of the floor. They have some advantages relative to us with their size and strength and girth and offensive rebounding. We knew it was going to be a fight. We had some foul trouble. Uh, I thought Job did a phenomenal job coming in the game and, and changing the complexion of the game with his shooting and with his ability to just kind of stretch out the defense. Um, that run that we had with him in the game, you know, that we, we took the 10-point lead was was pivotal, and you know, you knew UConn was going to make a run back. Then down the stretch, um, I believe we had five, is at least four, but I believe we had five straight stops in a row, and that's what we needed to win. We'll go to Ben right here. You used the phrase "win anyway" since you got into Marquette. Was this like the ultimate example of, of winning anyway, with the foul trouble and giving up the offense rebounds and, and going deep into your bench? Yeah, I mean, this was a great team win, and uh, you know. In a game like this, UConn's going to make some plays. Uh, you know, the ref called, refs called some fouls. We had, you know, some of our best players were riddled with foul trouble for most of the game. Also played less than half the game. Uh, but I think it's a testament to the depth that we have on our team. And you know, at one point I looked out there and we got, you know, a bunch of freshmen and sophomores out there just fighting and battling, scratching for their lives. Uh, but these guys didn't blink. They were lost in a fight the entire night, and it was a ton of fun to watch. Second round, John. Shaka, you've talked about this team responding in moments throughout the entire season. Um, St. John's game out in Queens, you came back from that halftime. Tonight, you kept on responding to UConn's runs. What could you just say about your team's response tonight to make sure you were, put yourself in a position for tomorrow for the title game? Well, I, I think when, when we get lost in the fight, and what I mean by that is we let go of all the other stuff that can creep into the mind all the doubts, anxieties, worries, uh, all the stuff on social media. These guys, if, if, if you cut them open, you'll, you'll find inside of them a championship DNA. And it's pretty exciting because, I mean, these guys are just uh, in their sophomore year. We've got three freshmen out there playing significant minutes, got another sophomore in Stevie, and then three juniors. Um, but the reason that they built that character about them is because of the way they feel about each other. And that's what's allowed us to respond when we've hit adversity. In the middle of the way. Coach, you talked about defense. All year I've watched this team play for steals and deflections. It looked like it had a completely different mindset from the beginning of just walling up and denying. I mean, three steals, you held them to 68 points. Was there a reason for the change? Uh, no, I mean, we didn't go into the game trying to change anything. Uh, the UConn was the reason. I mean, those guys took care of the ball really well. They had nine turnovers. Normally we forced 16, 17, 18 turnovers. We did not get our hands on the ball as well as we normally do. You have to find different ways to win. We knew that playing against UConn, we were going to have to make some adjustments, and we were going to have to fight like crazy when they tried to throw the ball inside when they got offensive rebounds, and we did that just enough. Right in front. Cam, uh, that three you hit um, to beat the shot clock, I mean, that was a pretty pivotal moment. Um, and as a player, I feel like you have those moments where you kind of just chuck it up and pray that it goes in. Was that one of those moments for you? Uh, no. Uh, I <laughs> shot that, honestly, knowing I was going to make it. Uh, I feel like every shot I take, I feel like I'm going to make it. So I had a little bit of time. I felt like I could have took like an extra dribble or two. But once I got it, I just you know, just take my time, get my feet set, and just shoot out a normal shot. Come on. Uh, Coach, you had that key stretch uh, end of the second half without Colick, without Iguodaro. What was the key there? Uh, these guys manage the game really well. I mean, we've probably practiced next to never without those guys in the game, you know. So we had a lineup out there that, uh, you know, normally is not out there together. But again, our guys stayed together. They, they trusted the plan. We had some imperfect possessions on the defensive end, but there was a de or on the offensive end, but there was a dedication to getting stops, and uh, they just kept fighting. Over here. Uh, ben, no, let's go to Ben first. I don't know. Jack, you had, to, you had to come in, you had to battle the, the two behemoths on your time, but you could space them out on the other end. So what, what was your mentality? How did you try to affect the game when you, when you got in? Um, just, just fight. Uh, also, we were dealing with foul trouble. I knew I had to come in and just fight for positioning down 
there and then be smart and you know, offensively and just kind of, uh, they want to post me up down there and have to manage them offensively. So they had to come out and guard me and not take it down We're doing two more, all the way in the right. Uh, Coach, congratulations. Uh, right at the very end of the game, uh, you uh, jumped high in the air, pumped your fist, <laughs> uh, warm the emotions right there, and would you say you still have uh, the best jumping ability on the team? <laughs> I got more jumping ability than these two, but I definitely don't have the best on the team. Um, you know, it just kind of felt like, and I don't want to say this in the most respectful way possible, but it just kind of felt like a lot of people were just kind of giving you kind of the game coming in. And, uh, you know, there was comments made about who owns the garden and that kind of stuff. And, you know, we said, wait a minute, we won, we won this league. So, we, you know, we're not taking a backseat to anybody. And uh, you can say that, but then going and doing it is another thing. And uh, you know it's going to be hard. You know it's going to come down in the last minute or even second of the game, and it did. So that was just elation that, you know, our guys were able to go do what we said we would do. Last question, yeah. You held Hawkinson two for 11 for the field. What, what, what did you try to do with him, and why were you so effective? That was the defensive key to the game. Uh, and I thought both teams missed some really good looks from three that uh, you know could, could have swung the game either way. But I, I thought on Hawkins, Omax Prosper, um, and whoever on our team was on him did a phenomenal job. We can beat UConn with their bigs scoring some twos around the basket, we can win the game like we did tonight. I don't know that we can beat them if Hawkins goes and makes five, six threes in Calcaterra and guys are making, and they made some in the first half, um, but I thought throughout the game, our guys stayed attached to him. They ran a lot of different screening actions for him. And again, Omax Prosper especially deserves amazing credit for being locked in on that assignment. Marquette, thank you. Thank you.